Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lost Cities of Europe. I'm your host, Italian Mocha Lover, and even though we're not playing as Ireland, this looks very disgusting. I guess they're in the Irish Civil War. Holy cow. I still have yet to try out Ireland, but... Okay, well, you guys do, you guys, and we've got quite a few comments to go through, but let's just go ahead and do... Uh, we'll do... We can do these past five as we talk about a couple comments first. Let's go deal with the bad again. Many Italians are Catholic, and the Pope himself lives in an enclave within our lands, despite that. The relationship with the Church has been very bizarre, to say the least. We need to have a coherent relationship with the Catholic Church, whether it be adversarial or mutually beneficial. So, a couple comments. Someone recommends that we go with the new Charter of Labor path. Let's see. Labor, Charter, Charter. Where's the Charter? Oh, oh, right there. ITA, Good Boy Econ. Good Boy Econ, huh? Well, someone reckons we can go down that way. Completely reform our economy. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I honestly have no idea how we can do that perfectly. Reinforce autarky. Oh, so maybe these influence are influenced by whether we choose an economy of labor, an economy for ethics, an economy for our prosperity. So, interesting. So we'll see what happens. Um, I already know which path we're going to take, and you will know by the end of this episode as well. So, overall... There is a lot more of support between reform trade unions as well as to create the CGLTA. Uh, there's actually a lot more support for us to, of course, do create the CGLTA. So we'll go down that route, which was a few of the comments from yesterday. We're almost done with our air doctrine completely, which is great. It is 1965. It's almost 1966, too. So let's grab some of this because we can. And I guess we shall get started with create the CGLTA. Unions are by nature disruptive, seditious, and prone to extremist and partisan behavior. However, at the same time, even within the most radical unions, there exists a significant cross-section of workers who just want to work out negotiations with the state and corporations. We can tap into this innate desire to our advantage. Back in Mussolini's glory days, we had some successes in controlling unions by restructuring them and placing them under a singular uh, labor umbrella. If we were to do the same, we could create a union that is as dependent on us as we are on them, creating a better dynamic for future negotiations. We won't need to weigh the needs and interests of half of a hundred different labor organizations, as just any decisions we make will go through this one. Uh, we make will go through this one grand union, greatly ex expediting the process. The man in the Vatican. Oh, very good. Illegal trade unions, we lose stability, cap, and industrial expertise, but oh, that sucks. That's alright. Things happen. The man in the Vatican scores this administration and fascism as a whole has deeply has deep rooted support within the Catholic Christian population base of Italy. But much of the support is based around a single man, a single city, the Pope. The ruler of the Vatican City has always held a distaste for the authoritarian tendencies of fascism, and a result of his beliefs has spread throughout Christianity. Whatever the Pope says is liable to be followed in close strides by all of Christendom, and Italy is no different. Of course, the Pope cannot simply be assassinated and it be covered up as a fall down the stairs. We must convene a meeting of the minds and figures out and figure out a method to deal with them. Perhaps it's time to finally finish 1870. Maybe not. Those siege walls can't stand up the bombers. Well, that's very true. And we've got some political power, which is kind of nice. Other comments, but I do have a cup of green tea to keep us nice. Oh, no. That's not green tea. It's hibiscus Hawaiian tea to keep us nice and uh, pleasant. I'll put it like that. <sighs> very good. Very, very good. Other comments. Let's see. Basically, someone says we should become the Italian Speer. Well, since Speer's gone, someone's got to be Italian Speer, so I guess, or just be Speer, so I guess we'll try to be Speer, in which we're doing relatively okay as Speer. Let's see, other things include, let's see, budget, spend, more GDP, because we ran out of debt to do, so why not, right? No more debts, no problem. Uh, let's see, go with a secular society and go as reformist as possible. Or almost as reformist as possible. So, a secular society is basically where we want to appear. We got to estrange the church, a secular society. So, that's the way we will be going. So, fascism is futurist. So, we'll go down that way. Ooh, we get more secular, and it gives us slightly more political power, which is kind of nice. But, alright, so with this one as well, we can't do work with economic barons. If you'd like to read about that, go right ahead. But, uh, overall, there is lag. What happened in 1966? Proprietary corporations seems okay. But there's actually quite a bit more support for introduced workplace democracy, which we will do next. By nature, human beings tend to know a great deal about things in the fields of work and expertise, and very little about things outside of it. So, when it comes to matters of politics, foreign policy, economic models, and military strategies, we obviously leave those to the party to handle, as we have people for whom these are areas of expertise. But in the workplace, the story is very different. 
We can offer reforms that allow workers through the election of representatives to the CGLA to influence how the workplaces and jobs are run and to use such ground level experience to advise the state in a limited capacity as its, to its pol policies. It would also do much to satisfy the union workers after collecting them beneath the CGLA's umbrella and force the unions themselves to be friendlier with us. Very good. Very, very good, actually. Uh, research will be done in two days, so Scott Helicopter Companies are nice. Uh, I can grab some more maintenance companies, why not? Scott Helicopter Companies will be very, very good. And for this one, we shall do so. There's actually quite a bit of support out of all three of these for, between a lot of independent parties. Between this one, uh, ooh, Shatters Western Siberia, whoa. And as well as Organic Democracy, as well as Move Towards Socialization. Overall, between all three of these, the one that won the most was Organic Democracy by quite a long shot, actually. So, as an ideology, fascism is rooted in ideas of populism. Answering to no higher authority than the state and its nation, it's often easy to forget that all a nation is, is a race of people. When it comes down to practical applications of democracy, it would be easier to know the nation's will if it was something that could be questioned, give, it, give answers, and make its opinions known. This is what a democracy is in practice. Yes. Ceasefire? Cool. Wiretapping. This is not to say that we are embracing liberal ideas or abandoning the party's priority as a primary vehicle of the nation's will, but... When the state and its nation are acting in unison, who could possibly stand in their way? If we allow the people to elect representatives within, within the fascist party itself, we can create an ever-strengthening synthesis between the state and the nation, of course. We will retain control over the state itself, but with an organic Italian democracy springing up at our feet. Because that gives us even more reform points, which is not bad. Not bad at all. So we've got about a week left, which is totally fine, because we must survey for a project first. Uh, let's see. Best of enemies, doesn't matter, I don't really care. Empire management, I don't really care about that right now. Sorry for our project, thank you. And 36% of the way down there, not bad. High reserve discovered in Algeria. Oh, I'd love to do that, but we don't have the political power for it. Ah, oh, there we go. Cool. Anything else here? Yes, please. Mold GDP. It's one of the rare campaigns where, actually, where we're mostly just like, we've already cut down the debt. So at this point, we're just going to invest in the GDP more. I could slash this. So we are. Just because we can. We need more fuel. Oh, good. Oh, good God. Okay, so here's the new deal. A new charter of labor. Okay, so there's 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 quite a bit of support for me to go with the for forms that say abolish taxation. There's quite a bit of support for that. However, there is a tremendous amount of support for me to not abolish taxation. So I'm not exactly sure what will happen, but I think to not abolish taxation, we got to go with an economy for ethics. I think that's the way we have to go because this seems like if an economy of labor, a new charter of labor, that will eventually um, get rid of taxation, probably, and force meritocracy. While I would love to go down this way, there's a lot of support to not get rid of uh, taxation, which I think is that way. So, it is what it is. I'm just going off with what you guys said, so we're going to go with an economy for ethics. Um, economy for labor would be nice, but we'll go down this way. So, after all this time, with no small degree of internal resistance to the project, we have finally established a firm foundation for building the new Italy. Our vision of a sane, sustainable, and growing economy that holds up to a truly modern standard. The liberal democracies of the world want to cry our governance as brutal on the surface. There is no better way to shut them up than to show them that we are better in matters of both production efficiency and worker welfare. A happy working population is a productive working population, and a productive, productive working population is what we're going to march Italy from being a relative backwater, not realizing its full potential, into, a, into the power it was always meant to be. So yeah, I mean, I gotta play as scores of, like a few times. One with going almost full reforms and taxation. One going, you know, a reformed sort of establishment scores, uh, and then conservative scores uh, with slight reforms, and then there's scores uh, with just full blown conservative hardline, not gonna budget on anything. So uh, that's twelve days left. That's that's quite a, that's quite a while. Quite a while. It's all right. Uh, let's go and grab some of this then. Oh, there's a little bit of lag. There you go. Cool. Mm, budget goes up. I wonder if we can change that growth rate. Hopefully it gets a little better than what we currently have it. What are we currently building? We're building factories in Siwa. Hopefully I won't regret that eventually. Eventually. I would like some more radar, though. That would be pretty good to get. Just in case. Especially if with Daddy Goring up there. Don't really trust them that much, I'll be honest. So, an economy for ethics. We actually get an establishment point. And we actually have more population, but less cap, which is, you know, whatever. So what does the reformed economy look like? Eastern Shield, of course. We have this one. A reformed economy, less consumer goods, more tension, growth, and base. That's not great. <laughs> That's not great. 
Cool. And after that, we'll see what happens and opens up later on. But, let's go in as strange as the church. Why not? The Catholic Church has been much too powerful in the Italian society for too long. The time has come to remove any influence that they have outside of Vatican City. We will remove Catholic religion from the public schools and shut down pro-papal mouthpieces. This may outrage the church and the Pope may complain, but it's necessary to save Italy from the papal control. We lose fascism support, we do get five more reform points, which means nothing because we can't do anything about it. So, kind of sucks, but whatever. And fund the project? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Alright, looks good. And you know what, at this point, let's grab a bunch more. Wow, we like, a, like no fuel. Um, yeah, I don't want them to raise their autonomy level, so... Saudi Arabia? The Saudis, I love the Saudis. The Saudis love us. And actually, since we're here, you know what? Screw it. Let's buy some more stuff, too. Uh, let's see, America? Sure, we, we have enough consumer uh, factories that I think this will be okay. There you go. And, oh, we have debt. Oh, no, 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 no. Strange Church, thank you. How dare you give us more debt? How dare you? Uh, test our work, thank you. All right. So we're doing economy for ethics. Um, I guess we start to go down a new chart of labor. Okay. An economic fortress. I T A M E H. So this is my good, my, my boy. My boy, Econ. This is good boy, Econ. What a country needs is bad boy, Econ. Really showing you what the devs think about what the, what the economic routes are, but, you know, whatever. Uh, let's go down this way. Yeah, they got better artillery. Nice. All right, then. I guess we'll have to go down this way. Um, completely reform our economy. The state of uh, the relationship between our labor and business has been allowed to stagnate into an unsustainable rot upon the nation. The Carta del Livorno of 1927 gave the industrialists far too much leeway, and they took full advantage of this fact. They believed that because the state permitted them to continue existing as independent entities, they would be able to pursue policies detrimental to the overall health of the state without consequence. They were wrong. Duce scores has no patience for those who use the precious resources of the nation, who are given so much support by the nation only to reward those who have fully or actually put an effort above put in effort nothing at all. An updated Carta del Lavoro has required to restrain the greed of unchecked capitalism. Those who put in their fair share of labor towards building the nation shall receive a fair rec recompense. Recompense. Alright, not bad. Not bad. It's definitely what I did not expect for us to go down with, but yeah, you know what? It is what it is, I guess. Alright, no more debt. There you go. Uh-oh. Because eventually we will get even more debt just because oil crisis, but, you know, whatever. Well, all right then. Next one will be done eight days at Crumbling City. The Vatican is always working in the benefit of the Pope, never professing the truth or working for the Italian people or Christendom itself. The Pope is a liar, cheat, and most importantly, a scam artist. Him and his city cannot be trusted, not by Rome and not by Italy. Oh, how's this news? Such were words by scores as he made a public address earlier this morning. So years of building tensions between the Vatican and the Italian administration have finally come to a head as Rome has severed most ties with the Holy See and declared the Pope untrustworthy. All this comes from a fresh campaign to pull apart Italian Christianity and the Pope in light of the realization that the Pope wields much influence over the population, and any hateful rhetoric directed towards fascism will inevitably be washed over the people of Italy. A campaign like this is audaciously ambitious at best, but scores and his administration remain confident they can pull off such a monumental societal transformation. The Pope and Christianity are one and the same. Oh boy. That might piss some people off. If we need to trade a little bit more, actually. Oh! Oh, and it begins. Alright, so we're building a lot more roads. That's fine with me. What if we also build a. Actually, let's get some synthetic refineries here. Let's get two of these going, and then one of these. One of these bad boys. Yeah, no, not bad. Yeah, there you go. Put it on the coast. Nothing says nuclear reactor goodness like building on the coast. A, B, C of economics. Uh, we get good minimum wage, all right. As well as a six-hour workday. Holy crap, we go from 12 to 6? Jesus Christ. 
We seek nothing than a, than le, nothing less than a ground-up economic revolution, one that is neither socialist nor communist, but truly our own, truly fascist. We have much to do, and must do it all quickly, if we wish to preempt any retaliation or pushback from the capitalists who stand to lose the means of exploiting the people. With all different reforms we have to pursue, Il Duce has carefully considered each proposed reform. The workday could do some shortening, but that might cause a loss in pay for the workers unless we were to increase pay. That might just work, and not only would it improve the conditions, it would also free up more jobs for citizens to contribute to the state. What a brilliant plan! For all their posturing, Il Duce has already shown up the so-called economic experts who have waxed on and on about the difficulty of solving such issues of labor. Yeah, just raise the minimum wage and shorten the workday. Nothing can go wrong from that. The Duce explained it himself. ABCs of economics, expansion of the IRI, cooperation and evolution. Sure, why not? The state requires the workers to survive, and conversely, the workers require the state to thrive. It's only natural that they should be allies instead of enemies. Duce scores the dreams of an Italy that looks out for her workers, and workers who take pride in taking care of their mother country. The previous Duces, Mussolini and Siano, both failed to live up to this idea, but with the new vision steering her, Italy may finally prosper as she was always meant to do. If the relationship our nation has with the capitalists isn't one of the hosts and parasite, then it may be fair to claim that the relationship between the state and its workers is one of perfect symbiosis. Both parties thrive with mutual success, and both falter with mutual failure. If we can help it, we, we should strive to always be improving our efficiency and promoting the welfare of our source of strength, the people. We get a true meritocracy here. Hopefully. Oh, and there goes the Central European Council. Goring is on his run. I think it was Goring, right? Let's double check. Oh, there you go. Yep, the fat man reigns. Oh boy. Vetuska, and we have. Actually. Ooh, oh. Oh. Uh, Euro Republic? What the heck is this? What the heck is this nation? Whoa. Anton. Alright. Uh, any focuses? No? Okay. Republic of. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that one. N-word? Nenetia. Euroleague. Euro Republic. Drag? Good enough. Ah. Wow, that's kind of cool, actually. That's actually pretty cool. Still a lot of resources, but what else is new, you know? Um, that one's going to be done. Project being decided, and boom. All right, well, the economy stuff is kind of fun. Come on, let's go down. Uh, dismantle the tax system. Oh, there it is. Oh, I don't think there's anything we could do. I mean, you, you saw me go down an economy for ethics. Was, was that the wrong one to do? Um, I thought if you go hard left side, you go down the left side. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this is a, that was a mistake. I mean, how do you get down here then? Uh, maybe you have to go down an economy for prosperity then. Oh, uh, wow. Income rate minus 50%, so it doesn't mean you get rid of all your money, but let's do expansion of the IRI. With the capitalists finally out of the way, it will follow to us to provide more direction for the economy than we have previously thought. We won't repeal the mistake of neglecting the issues of the workers and people, hoping naively that the factory owners and the bankers and the capitalists would solve all the problems. No, we will oversee everything with a watchful eye. We hope to achieve this. Uh, the RI will need, of course, to be supported with more funding and resources, though. It'll take some time for the new system to properly adjust to this level of oversight, but very soon the Italian economy will work like the perfect machine it always should have been from the beginning. One that serves the best interests of the people and the state, not the wealthy and the, of course, elite. Oh, crap. Uh, my apologies. I didn't want to go down this way. I thought with... Thought with uh, it is what it is, I guess. Well, hopefully we'll do the democracy route when I play this Italy again. It should go a lot better. It should, right? It should. Yeah. Huh. Two days, huh? Well, I guess we'll go with the improved rate fire control system, because we can, as well, right? Occupy the factories? Sure, why not? The legal mafia bosses, that's what these factories owners are. Criminals in expensive suits and ties. They will exploit the hard work of their fellow Italian without a second thought or any respect given. And for what? Greed. All they care about is their own personal bank accounts. They produce nothing. Their efforts do not require the or create the products that the state requires. And it's the effort of the workers they so selfishly neglect that keeps the country running. 
<clears throat> this is not what fascism is about. This is a disgusting perversion. It ends now. These men have grown far too fat and complacent under the old way, but no longer. They believe that they are entitled to ownership of the state's vital organs, but they are wrong. They were given these factories as a privilege, and privileges can be revoked. The army will relieve these ungrateful ingrates of their precious factories. This is a true meritocracy, apparently. But we do need to keep an eye. Uh, need to know where Germany is at with War Plan A, huh? I'll live with the Irish. Expansion of the IRI. Oh, yeah. Good claims on. Oh. A tin pot for broken men. Well, there's no guarantee that he'll actually go to war this. Because goring is pretty. AI goring is pretty bad. He still might be bugged. I don't know at the time of this recording, but maybe. So, what is this meritocracy thing? Hmm. The ABCs of economics. A true meritocracy, not bad. State controlled industry, not bad either. Let's go with new industrial investments. A major priority going forward should be to shore up our industrial base so that we might be able to compete in a global economy. For far too long has Italy been an industrial backwater compared to our neighbors. Agriculture is all well and good, but it won't put Italy on the world stage. No, what we need are more factories, more goods being produced, more exports. The good news is that we can directly control how we wish to expand our industry. Consumer goods, military equipment, whatever, we can choose the direction of production with our new control. Drafts have already been drawn up, ready to be sent to the IRI headquarters at a moment's notice, once we've decided on our approach. And it shall uh, improve the effect of the state control industry as well. Let's see. Yep, we got. We already went through organic democracy, workplace democracy. Someone recommends in the comments from the last video to conquer as much as possible. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not against that at all. That's kind of my hope to do that as a fascist Italy to conquer as much as humanly possible. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, I don't want to abolish taxes. I really don't. You guys recommend we don't. I don't want to. But it seems like we're forced down that way with. Mr. Reformist Scorza. Uh, that's the case. I might want to keep a little, small little thing of uh, liquid reserves just in case we actually have debt eventually. Oh, peace in Vietnam. Peace in our time. 16 days left, huh? All right, then. I guess we'll reform the OND. That might be really good. Maybe. All right. So, who says that we should not reward those who provide us with their de dedicated efforts in the pursuits of a stronger state? The communists and socialists have always attempted to worm their way into the hearts of the workers by promising adequate compensation and the rest for hard work. How can we, as the greatest nation upon the face of the earth, promise any less than the right rabble? We've had a recreational club for our workers, the OND, for quite some time. Initially, it was quite similar to the YMCA in America, but it later morphed into a unique display of Italian and fascist solidarity for the laborers. We have the opportunity to take it even further, though. We can make it a universal perk for all the dedicated patriot workers. We can also expand the activities it can organize by increasing its funding. Remember, a happy worker is a productive worker. Cool. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Expand this just a wee bit more and more growth because we're gonna need more growth and reform the OND. Next research shall be done right now. Your hospital is very good. It's already September 1966. Hope you're having a great year. Let's grab some transport helicopters. Thank you. And uh, grab some attack helicopter company ones. That'd be very nice. We need way more ba main battle tanks, but other than that, we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. We need more planes, of course, but what else is new? We'll go down to three maybe for now. Go to one. Go down to two. Uh, let's go down and cut this down a little bit more. At least get to one for now for each of these. So at least we're producing a little bit here. That'd be kind of okay. Go down to one as well. Base bleeds, not bad. Get some more cast, maybe. Uh, get some more of that as well. More tanks are always welcome as well. Let's see. I don't see any helicopters here, though. Oh, we got transports and attacks. Is that it? Attack helis. Uh, the SPT, basic heavy, heavy SPT, scout helicopters, well, transports, attacks, scouts, maybe, maybe, maybe not, cool, we got eight days left, can we do this one, no, uh, let's come over here then, let's improve our tanks, how about that, eight days left, uh, that's fine. And we'll probably provide the capital next and further financial supervision. 
has been common practice since the earliest days of mass market economics. That interested parties, often investors and banking institutions, have kept their eye on the ever-fluctuating patterns of financial boom and bust. We allow them to use this information to make their own investment decisions because we naively hope that they would have our best interests at heart. We no longer hold any such delusions. We now know that we can only rely on ourselves to make the right calls uncorrupted by greed. New offices are being established with the sole purpose of monitoring all economic action within the state, so that when one sector does face decline, we shall step in to provide for the people. Um, we have an improved academic base. The foundation society is in writing. It cannot be overstated how the institutions that define civil life rest on the bedrock and on the written word. Society marches her marches forward hand-in-hand with, hand with the literature of the time. It lives and dies by the high tides of writing. She sleeps when the pages are burned and wakens when a curious young person decides to scratch something on that palm leaf. It's a progenitor of the liberty and may spell the end of it. Our schooling and our literacy matter the more than nearly anything else. When it dies, progress isn't just halted. It be actively begins to wither. Progress towards whatever ideal, be it racial purity, free markets, or equality, cannot survive without a pen. So, yeah, so our universities have expanded. But some man today is newly learning how to read and opening up the Pandora's box at his writing. That is something to be celebrated. Wow, 7.5% more research speed? Not bad. We have some of the best scientists in the world. Oh, I didn't realize this was 1965, so whatever. It doesn't matter to me. We're pretty much done with all that stuff anyway, so. Let's go fund the project. 42% is not bad. It just takes God way too long to do all this stuff. And further financial supervision. Anything else? No, thank you. Good. Provide the capital. In the short term, our efforts to bolster or boost our industrial production and economic growth may require an infusion of cash and resources, but our experts agree that taking the time to repair a stable financial base will pay out dividends later. Wages, land, foreign resources, and the like are not cheap, and now that we've taken full responsibility for the economic affairs of our nation, we have a corresponding duty to support the national industry and in making this abrupt transition. The chief of the newly re reorganized budget office has been meeting regularly with scores and recently to discuss the funding of multiple agencies and programs for the purpose of transitioning the economy into lines that we approve of. Pretty good. Let's come down here and test the work. Very, very good. I, I'm still ignoring it, like trying to get Romania or Serbia into our sphere of influence. So we'll see about that. Nope. Oh wait, we d we have debt again? Oh my goodness, no, 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 no. I don't believe in debt. Uh, we must provide the capital though. And there we go. So we have state-controlled industry, of course, a true meritocracy. Ooh, wow, plus 30% construction speed. Holy cow. Mm. Reformed economy, of course. Next one will be what? 400 million in debt. Hmm, what a shame. Absolute shame. Supply more trade managers, though. The workers are willing and able to serve the nation in all the capacity to do so through, through their labor, and we have full confidence in their skills, however. They are still workers at the end of the day. They still require the direction from men of ambition and skill in order to thrive, just as the overall people of the nation need leaders to survive the harsh realities of life. It's not enough to give a task to the servants of the state. Guidance is also necessary in order to maintain correct order. This is where our new managerial schools shall come into play. Now that we've had the factories firmly under our own authority, we can select those who show the most promise and place them in positions of trust. If they perform well, they shall be handsomely rewarded, and if they fail, they can be replaced with minimum hassle. Trained managers are usually probably a good thing to have. It's better than untrained managers. There we go. Whew. Nice. 82 billion. We're getting better. We're getting better and better, everyone. State controlled industry. So we have state controlled industry. Output's looking really good. A true meritocracy is looking not too bad. ABCs, yeah. That one just state controlled industry to help uh, handle it from here. So a free market of competitors and innovation is not inherently a bad system, man. It is, in fact, one of the most best economic systems ever devised in human history. But this is no longer an era where you can rely on free markets. When we said the free market system was one of the best, we meant it. But one of the best does not mean the best. No, that honor belongs to our current innovative system that allows us to harness the positive aspects of the market system with equally strong benefits of the command economy. We can direct those enterprising and competitive captains of industry to better benefit our nation. Oh. Well, there goes the Divine Mandate of Siberia. They're doing a good job over there. Having a good old time. Now, what's going on with uh, Papa Goring? Titan Atomic Security, huh? And who's their puppet? Is it Aus It's not Austin, is it? Slovaki. Slovakai. Slovakai. Okay. All right. Good luck. Good luck with that. Oh, sorry for brother. That'd be good. That'll do something. We get a higher GDP. And I got some better managers. Handle it from here, though. Good. Even better tanks. The bestest tanks. Good, 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 good. After that, we shall do a state-led industry. 
What is the job of a leader? As Duce Scores has explained, the role of a good leader is to improve the state of both the individual members of the group as well as the group as a whole. It is with this philosophy that we will direct the economy, like a conductor leads an orchestra. Like an orchestra, the successful carrying of the, out of the mission will result in a harmony where the subgroups complement and amplify the results of the others until it is art. The art of economy has not been given its rightful status compared to its cousins, but we will change that. We will be artists sculpting a new Italy. Oh, and it goes Wales. And England, of course. So, good. Alright, everyone, so we've already gone ahead and finished state led industry, which we shall do hands of the state. E economics of nations are great, intricate leviathans that present far too much complexity to be handled by mere individuals making decisions based on personal interest and greed. No, it is the truth that the economy of a state should exist to serve the state and not the other way around, for that reason. It is unconscionable for the economy to be directed by any entity less than the state itself. With our hands, we will mold the future of even the economy itself, which is. Our power over all within our domain. We shall uplift the dedicated, the worthy, the patriots. We shall push aside the corrupt, the greedy, the capitalists. Much like a father raises his children with the values of responsibility and dedication for the benefit of society. So sh shall we raise a system of ours to promote the welfare of all Italians by requiring it to always act in interest of the greater good of our people. Very good. And also, we have a little bit less manpower right now just because I already went ahead and added it on to our infantry divisions. Field hospitals. So... I thought since we had such little manpower, we must well throw on some stuff to make sure that our manpower will be, do slightly better in the future, but enforce meritocracy. What determines a man's value? Is it his name? Could it be his wealth? Perhaps it is measured in his land ownership. No, none of these individual things can tell the true worth of an individual. As Duce Scores has always taught us, it is the effort that the individual has put forwards or towards the betterment of the state and the successes of those labors that are the only true indicators of value. The noble worker, whose sweat-covered brow and callous palms have more to offer to the nation and the people than all of the decadent capitalists combined. The former is a shining example of the ideal fascists, the latter are parasites that seek only for their own profit at the expense of the others. From now on, it shall be by merit and merit alone that will matter for the purposes of judgment and evaluation. The days of elitism and nepotistic favoring are merciful no more. Cool, and we already did all this. Let's grab some Signal Company 2s, and maybe we get some better uh, skirts, or turrets, or heat integration for our tanks. And we'll soon have multi-layered ceramic composites. Alright, still no debt, which is nice. I'm completely avoiding the get rid of taxation thing, but hey, whatever. Chain snapped, huh? Very nice. Ooh, lo stato de lavoro. But it feeds them. Oh boy, the guiding hand. At last, Italian industry is... As it should be. The control over the means of production will not rest with the greedy and short sighted employees or employee employers, nor with the filthy and ignorant employees, but with us. We are the rightful representatives of the Italian people, the Italian nation, and the Italian future. Is it not natural that we should determine Italian production as well? Although there are still plenty of skeptics, in time they will understand it is for their own good after all. For a moment, a handful of incidents of bureaucratic mismanagement have been reported. Rotten apples that must be plucked for our nation to achieve its true potential. Fascism above all else. Very good. And for the future, we gotta cut that down. We'll see what happens. And obviously, it's oh, it's 1967, like I said, I think. But I don't want to get rid of taxation. No taxation. Income rate minus 50%. Well, we're I think at 42%, right? Oh, I don't want to get rid of that yet. I really don't. I would love to do this stuff down here, but oh, national corporations. Oh, I don't want to go down that way. Well, let's go down and do something else. Hmm. I think we should do some of this stuff down here as well. Legacy of Caesar. Well, maybe we'll try that one. To say that we have a strange history of the French nation would be to put it mildly, ever since their unification, we've always considered that them a major competitor, an obstacle that they have had the same sentiment for us, too. We may have fought alongside them in the First World War, but we were robbed of our rightful claims after they seduced us from our original partners in Germany and Austria. When the Second World War broke out, we seized the opportunity, therefore, to take the land we had originally been planned to press for, Savoy. No, our recent history with France has not been a happy one, yet it doesn't have to stay that way. After all, we share far more in culture and spirit than we have had differences politically. Roman legions helped civilize Gaul, and now it's time for Italy to once more aid and add France back into its domain. The change snapped throughout the modern history of humanity. There's been one constant, men work and man takes. The relationship between labor and capital has been an endless litany of rec recommendations, recriminations, and sabotage. The rich lie to the workers and steal from them, while the unlettered masses engage in plethora insurrection. So long as the relationship remains combative, so long as the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer, the Italian nation will always fail to live up to its true potential. It is the duty of the fascist state to enforce a non-combative relationship between the classes. In practice, this means that the factory workers will tend to the gardens and the bourgeoisie's theirs. Naturally, the upper classes will 
have the most to learn in this new arrangement, but thanks to the strength of our noble horses, they can do nothing but whine and glare from the sidelines. A change is coming to Italy. Oh, a little bit of lag there, huh? Let's keep increasing the GDP, because we got to get higher and higher. Not that invisible. Uh, fast East is the future. Oh, no. We have known this from the beginning, yet more and more it seems that the future will never come. No matter how stringently we set the factory quotas, they're never quite met. No matter how many fervently how many fervently we pursue the practitioners of graft and corruption, they always seem to escape us. The town economy has degenerated into an almost absurdist state of chaos and incompetence. The fascist government has proven to be sadly incapable of bearing the massive burden of management that has been thrust upon it. There are still those within the PNF who argue that our rules are not their problem, only their application. However, the chorus of voices calling for halting our economic program or even its reversal grows even louder. Perhaps second thoughts are in order? Well, that's not good. That's really not good. State control. Oh, look at that. State control industry. Ooh. A true meritocracy is good so far, but. Ooh, that is not good. That is really, really, really not good. We must fund the project. And I guess we'll keep going down some other route. I'm not getting rid of taxation yet. There's no way. That's the last thing we're going to be doing. Uh, how about. Debates in the ISPI. Italy is the greatest, as we all know, and emerged from the greater war greater than ever, carving out a vast empire in the Mediterranean, Middle East, and Africa, now commonly known as the Italosphere, or Italosphere. In the modern era, however, there are debates in the Institute for Political Studies as to what we do with it. On one side, you have the conservative old guard. They want to keep the empire as it is, a top-down, exploitative, colonial empire. On the other, you have the new school, championed by younger diplomats and economists. They want to promote integration and development of the empire via investments and economic development, rather than purely exploitation. They argue that this will be better for the colonies, but more importantly, it'll make Italy itself stronger. The debates in the ISPI rage on, and what remains to be seen is who will win the day. And actually, if that's the case, ooh, we have this stuff, of course. It was recommended in the comments that I should just give myself some political power so we can do stuff here. I wouldn't mind that, actually, but you know, we'll see what happens. So, hmm. So we have the great game, basically, we have to do. Let's see. So after that one, we're going to go ahead and choose the Striking Talon, a pro-telling government installed in France, the protective wing offered to protect France. Spies over the Alps, posture in the Mediterranean, gain their trade by this. Italy will help you. Italy will protect you. Infiltrate the resistance. Um, that's not bad. Our funneling to France will harm the government. Stage border incidents. Whether you like it or not, the whips burn. While well, giving the factories back to the workers seemed like a worry-free solution to all of Italy's problems. But it turns out that money and power are a little more synonymous than we had previously thought. With their sudden loss of privilege, Italy's capitalists are removing their investments from the economy and keeping their liquid assets close to the chest. Obviously, this is rather inconvenient for our attempts to make Italy a fear and a respected power in the world. We're just a few of the no-good profiteers taking these unpatriotic actions. We'd naturally send the MSVN to sort them out. But the scale of this aversion makes this dangerous. If we seize their assets today, they may uh, flee the Nathan... Fleet a nation all together in, in the morrow. An unforeseen consequence. Well, that sucks. What is this? Operation ITS? Germans will not be pleased. It's all puppet regime in France. Whether you like it or not, the Germans will not be pleased. Okay, advisors in the French government. Rewrite French laws. Reorganize the French army. Renew the French economy. Well... It seems like we should probably go down the right side, because eventually we do want to do it more peacefully in the next time I play Italy, so... The striking talent might be the way to go. No, well, I can't even... I don't even have political power yet, so... Seems like things are all falling apart here. But at least we still have taxation, because now we have state control industry, which really sucks, as well as a true meritocracy. Oof! But we're still humming along. Still humming along. No worries about that, right? No worries. Well, I guess we'll do the striking talent, because we can. Unfortunately, it's become plain that the government of the rump French state is unwilling to cooperate with us. This is despite the clear and present danger that we find them, they find themselves in. More direct action may be required, although we hope to avoid a full-scale conflict that would drain resources in time. Still, our armed forces may be needed, and the French will not be able to resist for long should it come to blows. While taking a more hostile tactic against the French army, or French may be more resource-intensive in the short term, it may allow us to ultimately exert a greater degree of overall control over their state once we inevitably drag them kicking and screaming into our sphere. Thus, I am already given scores of several proposals for strong arming the French that will not involve the use of direct military action, including manipulating the remnants of the French resistance. They recommend using our overwhelming military supremacy to intimidate them into submission. Cool. Yeah, if, it just seems like Italy's just falling apart. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go with, what well, you know, the 
get rid of taxation yet. I, mean, I will do it eventually, but the world stage. The Institute of International Political Studies, or the IISPS, has brought up a very important topic relevant to Italy's modern dilemma. We're standing on the world stage. The way the other powers look at her. As a strong and proud empire, or a second-rate pawn. The institute itself, mostly just college kids who never figured out what they want to do, has brought forward legitimate choices. In the olden days, Italy, it has created a balance of relationships between foreign powers, powers which could make or break Italy's rise of prominence, the Entente and Central Powers in the Great First World War, France and Britain in the new in the interwar. The Axis and Allies in the second choosing definitively a side only when convenient. The situation Italy faces now is not too different, simply another balance of power between the superpowers of the world. Italy must nudge the powers off each other to get what she wants. There is another proposition, however, one more radical. Italy does not need outside help anymore, for she is a powerful empire with domains of her own. Our foreign diplomacy should be modeled directly around what Italy wants and what Italy demands, her sphere and her influence. No more playing second fiddle, no more answering the wishes of other nations, Italy will stand on her own legs. Either option is, has her individual merits and inferiorities, but a choice must be made and may be made soon. The vultures are closing in around Italy and a path must be carved out to get the chaos to ensue. Sovereign nation, uh, sovereign empire, on her own, the new school. Superpowers gain the old school. Well, let's see. We'll probably want to go to the new school since we're more reformist, but, you know. Yeah. Promote imperial integration. Encourage imperial cooperation. An effective committee, which is not bad. A symbolic committee, which is okay. And a rubber stamp committee, which is also not bad. Or we do the old guard, which doesn't make too much sense for us. So we probably have to go with the new school. Right. Oh, well. Well, I mean, technically, the new school, that sounds like more democratic, more form sided. So that's probably the way we want to go. Actually, eh, well, they do have low taxation. If you go to no taxation and then go back up to a low taxation, that could actually be pretty darn good. Six hour workday with eight hour workday, selling spree. Well, I think we've got to go with the new school here. So, let's see. Basic common economic planning. <sighs> hmm. Promote imperial integration. Well, I'll leave it up to you guys. Should we do that or encourage imperial cooperation? Either one doesn't seem like it really does too much. Free trade seems good. Uh, grant infrastructure projects. Create the imperial committee, which is not bad. I kind of like that one. Imperial economic community. Or a new trade block. Or, and or, a rubber stamp committee, a symbolic committee, or an effective committee. I'll leave it up to you guys. I mean, we've already seen these a little bit, the imperial alliance. We create our own faction, which is kind of nice. In terms of common currency... Renewed investments in the empire is not bad, not great, but not bad. The Roman pact we create our own faction. Of course, this one is not bad either. Like I said, Italian businesses across the Mediterranean is not bad, as well as the Mediterranean block. Let me know in the comments below which one, which side we should go, as well as these stuff down here too. So, regardless, I want to continue focusing more on France, posture in the Mediterranean. France has long accepted the loss of its status as the great naval power of the Mediterranean, and at present its navy is essentially non-existent. With Germany also no longer interested in the region since the failure of Atlanthropa, we are the kings of the Magnum, and thus have a great deal of influence all over all the nations that surround it, and the French are no exception to this law. A few well-placed demonstrations of our naval might off of France's southern coast will serve as a useful reminder of our overwhelming difference of power. Perhaps the task force made up of our littorio battleships and a carrier over or two could even dock at Marseille. Under the pretense of repairs, we want them to get a nice hard look at the ships after all, and nothing expresses dominance like being forced to accept another nation's ships in one's ports. Ooh. Ooh, la la. We might not be able to build quickly, we might not be able to do too much. Especially industrially, but that's okay. We don't even have a great game yet, so it's very weird. And then spies with the ops, why not? It is always helps to have eyes on inside, or so the phrase goes. We can account for our own actions, of course, but not France's. Being unsure as to how France will respond to our overtures or direct actions could cause us a great deal of headache and delay while we attempt to parse every single line from the ambassador's letter or every single movement of military assets. Is this a simple redeployment or something more serious? We can't waste time on guesswork when the stakes for our position in Europe and beyond are so high. Scores are agrees that it would be better to have as much information on France's actions as possible from sources as direct as we can get. That's why we have deployed several SIM agents via parachute and by foot across the mountain border where they will attempt to gain access to French government ministers and military officers. Keep spending. Keep spending. Well, it's looking slightly better. Slightly, ever so slightly better. And spies over the Alps. Very, very good. Let's see. Stage border incidents. 
sure. There's a long and well not quite venerable, but a long tradition of faking small-scale violence along the borders of nations one wishes to involve itself with to create a pretext. The late fear of the Reich was known to favor such underhanded methods, and while one may deplore the negative aspects of such means, the results cannot be argued with. The spooks over at SIM are well-versed in such tactics, and no doubt already have conscripts or already have scripts covering dozens of potential incidents with the French. They need to be small enough so as to not provide a justification for all-out war, but significant enough that we are obliged to take action even if we have to strong-arm the French into cooperating. Of course, any power worth its salt will no doubt see through our trickery, but we will leave no traces that would allow them to definitely pin it on us. Oh. Very good. Yeah. Oh, man. Italy. Oof. Pretty rough. Civilian spending, military... We spent a lot on constru construction. We could slash it down, but I think we're okay for now. Actually, yeah, look at all that. We're building a lot. All over Italy. The Italian sphere of influence. So much building. Even Uganda's down here, huh? Uh, Road-wise, we're looking like... Well, we built a lot of roads so far. But there could always be more. Look at all this stuff. Oh, my goodness. Let's go ahead and build up, say, Shells and Trentino. There you go. I love border incidents. After that, we should do... Ooh, Global Trade Centers will do that soon. Infiltrate the Resistance. The French Resistance has had a rough couple of decades. Between German occupation, the arrival of the Burgundians, and the retreat of the free French regime to the coast of Africa, there just isn't much left of them, either manpower or energy. So, what they lacked in actual threat, they made up for a presence in the consciousness of the French people. After all, they did end up killing Dr. Goebbels once upon a time, and to have brought down one of the Rides or Reich's Titans was no small, no mean feat back in the day. SIM tells us that the current organization is as porous as a colander, and they'll have no trouble gaining access to it should we order them to. If we manage to get a hold of their decision making, we should be able to utilize them in very tactile and creative ways to further our agenda in France. Good idea. Keep slashing because you can. Nice. Got to get that GDP up as high as possible right now. And we have about three days left, and then we'll have that one done. Oh, done at the same time, basically. And there goes Norway. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I still got to play as Goring sometime, too. So after that one, we'll probably grab maybe some more APCs, maybe. That's not bad. And infiltrate the resistance. Yes, please. Yes, please. Poverty's doing better, though. As well as tertiary schooling. Not bad, not bad. Well, how about Operation Aitus? Sims' infiltration of the French resistance remnants have been paying off splendidly, and it would not be an exaggeration to say that we have them on puppet strings. With that crucial step completed, we can now turn to the second phase of our plans to drag the French state to our side, the decisive replacement of the government, and then the de facto integration of the empire. We need something quite big to justify such an act, however, and that's where the rub rub rubes or rubs of the resistance come into play. Go name Aitus, or Aitius. The plan will see one of our border supply depots blown up completely. Luckily for us, we will only lose some outdated equipment, and as all of our guards will be miraculously on break when the attack happens. Still, they will arrive just in time to kill one of the perpetrators, a member of the French Resistance, as it will be discovered, and our Cassus Belli will be assured. Then we can begin the second half of ITS, wherein we use our newfound excuse to overthrow the current French regime. The Germans will not be pleased. Well, the Germans are never pleased. What do you expect? Uh, let's grab some of this. Because they're going to be used very heavily right now. Um... How many soldiers does the French nation have? They're looking pretty weak. They have ten to fifteen thousand manpower. They okay, nobody. Oh, that makes it easy. That makes it very easy. Now I'm sure the Burgundians won't look that like this, but you now whatever. Hmm, not bad. So they took out Norway very quickly. They might have just naval invaded, but aerial recognition. What are they up to? Oh. Centralized military hospital seems like a pretty good idea. A lot of volunteers. Pride and Goring. Pride and Dr. Goring. Dr. Goring. Oh, that'd be kind of weird. Ah, oh, very good. After this. Ooh. 
Alpine infrastructure projects, regardless of our approach to pulling France within our fold, we still have to prepare for success now before it becomes an unsolvable problem later. The Alps separate our two nations by making land travel already difficult and cumbersome, and given our relations with France, we have allowed what little exists in the way of roads and other transport infrastructure to languish. Oh boy. Having a path in our soon-to-be allies quickly as possible is paramount, which is why the Army's Engineering Corps has been called on to spearhead the task of updating old roads and blasting mountain tunnels for new ones. The French government must not... No, does not know yet the full extent of this refurbishments, but it only knows benefits to them, so why did he, So why have them worry about it now? There you go, why not? So usually at this point, at least from what my understanding is, regarding Goring, he bugs out when trying to take out Switzerland, or he just isn't able to take him out or something, so... Against a German giant. Strength and defenses, wow. Plus, basically plus 30%. Cash must flow, that's not bad. Gotta play Switzerland someday. Hopefully, I do want to see Goring. I kind of do want to fight Goring, to be honest with you. Ah, oh, very good. What's going on here? Testing in progress, constructing civilian factories. That's nice. Uh, invis invisible invasion. Okay, so the board has been set, and the pieces have all been moved onto the concrete positions. Or the correct positions. All that stands between us and the control of the French state is a single order. With a single command from his desk, Duce scores that can begin a chain of actions that may reshape the balance of European power significantly. The French will be completely caught off guard as the takeover begins in earnest. Our ships will train their guns in the ports as our planes fly over the tops of the government buildings. No shots need to be fired. The French will understand the futility of the situation instantly. When the reality of the situation is inescapable, our army will begin marching into the country, disarming the forces, and occupying the capital. Which will be a great, great thing. I want to watch Goring. Oh, he's, he took Baron. It's not bad. Goring, Goring is doing... He's doing work. Nice. And that's not looking too bad either. Come on, Goring. I can't believe I'm rooting for Goring. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, boy. That's a pretty sad tank division. Come on, Goring. I can't send volunteers, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Nationalized banks, oh boy. Invisible invasion. Italy brain drain. Hum. I'm not sure if these reforms are really worth it, but maybe that's just me. We got a few days left for that. I'm going to wait to read another focus before we get there. Oh, they took another tile. Not bad, not bad. Oh, Geneva is probably going to fall as well. A little bit of lag. What's going on? Growing still leading. Oh, that's not bad. I like that. Forty-eight percent. Not bad. Civilian budget boost. Signal companies. It's sixty-seven still. Let's come over here and do some of this. Good. 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 Oh, and some of this too. Resource efficiency gain is usually pretty good to do. The invisible invasion. How well, we do Regia Aeronautica support? The faster we pull off our little invasion, the faster we can get back to the many other pressing issues that face Italy domestically and internationally. We've called on the Regia Aeronautica to support our efforts by ferrying key troops and personnel across the French state for the purpose of intercepting possible targets and securing government buildings and other vital sites of communication and infrastructure. At the same time, we have sent an entire squadron's worth of our heaviest bombers to the skies to circle the skies of France so that our seriousness is made perfectly clear. Our Air Force has always served us honorably, and we have no doubt that it will further distinguish itself in this latest mission very good follow up with maneuver the resistance the resistance has served us well in giving the pretext to extend our influence into France but now that we have almost completed our goal in the respect they're quickly becoming a loose and becoming a loose and we need to tie quickly luckily for us they have yet to discover our total infiltration of our organization. And information we pass to them will be taken as the absolute truth. No doubt they will become desperate. Not only will the French government still retain anti-democratic, still remain anti-democratic, but they will see us as a little better than the Germans. Well, let them think of that. If we can convince them to initiate an attack upon what they believe is an unprotected target, only to realize too late that they have been fairly misled, all the better for us. We may lose some small amount of men and equipment, it is true, but sacrifices are unavoidable in the brutal game we find ourselves playing. Indian communists in the Gulf. Oh no. Carlos scores his face altered between masks of confusion and frustration as he parsed through various reports and reconnaissance Im images. So, you're sure it was a communist uprising? He looked into the eyes of the SIM officer who had delivered the latest batch of information. Yes, sir. Our last report from the Governor Oriana has indicated that communist agitations were in progress, and this aerial photographs bear that out. He gestures to one of the images. If you look closely, you can see the red flags that we believe to be communists in origin that have draped across the Governor's headquarters. Scores uh, stared intently at somewhat blurry objects that were suspected of being icons of the red insurrection in the Gulf. 
Without even looking up, Scorza spoke to the Intel man. Any word from Oriana since the last time I asked? A shake to indicate the answer. I'm sorry, Maduce, but all that we know of is that the most is that most of the 4th Naval Division was able to pull out of the Gulf. We believe the Admiral simply gone silent until he enters into our territory once again. Scorza sighed and, with a wave of his hand, dismissed the other man. He needed some time to himself and to sit in peace and to think. What a headache. Oof. Comments revolt in the Gulf. Well, hold, is, that, is, that, is that literally all we get? Is that literally all that we get? Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Afghanistan be, do be looking kind of thick, though. Oh, boy. And the Gulf? Not here? Ah! Oh. So it just happens. There's nothing we can do about this, huh? Oil cult? God, he's looking... I don't know. It doesn't seem exactly... perfect yet. He seems like he could maybe use a little bit more polish, maybe? No, just from what I see, it seems like he could use a little bit more polish for... You know, for his, you know, portrait. But that's just me. I I'm not an artist, so... Well, physical artist, I guess. Uh, Sackler. Uh, Germany. There you go. That'll take forever, so... Okay, they defeated Switzerland. Um, that's not good for us, actually. That's a bigger border with Germany than I would have ever liked to see. Oof. A little bit of lag. Anything here? Guerrilla fighter. You guys have infantry expert, and you have you're an invader, so no. Anything else? Nope. And uh, we're gonna maneuver the resistance, of course. Temper Puyi. Well, goodbye Puyi. Have a good, well, good time in wherever you're gonna end up. All right, not bad. Not bad. Now it doesn't make any sense down here that the Hellenic state is not under the influence of the Italian Empire. Are you sure about that? I am more than certain that they are under the influence when they're in my sphere like this. So, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Battleship Diplomacy. The use of the Navy to compel diplomatic obedience is hardly a new concept. Before her collapse, the British Empire was adept at this style of force projection, and the U.S. was not far behind in terms of skill with this handy trick if one looks towards a record in the early 20th century. The minutiae of its history are largely irrelevant to use, however. What matters is that it is proven to work. Duce Scores is not too proud as to be unwilling to learn from the success of others, but neither is he a man too uncreative as to simply copy methods like a schoolboy copies facts. No. Scores will take from the pages of history, but he will modify the implementation to fit his own grand designs. Instead of mere gunboat diplomacy, we will have battleship diplomacy. Hmm. It could never go wrong. Right? Right. And you will be assimilated. Oh boy. I can't wait to assimilate the French. To become Italian. And... Not bad. Not bad. Very cool. What are we building? We're building a lot of Egypt up, which is totally fine with me. And any other technology? Yes. Horizontal industrial organization? Well, that's all right. You will be assimilated. The strong subjugate the weak. This has always been the fundamental truth of existence. Once upon a time, the French were strong, and so they naturally and rightfully dominated all others whom they had they held sway, including Italy. Now, though, the roles have been reversed, and just as it was no more than natural for French hegemony to be backed by force and violence, it is equally natural for hegemony to be similarly enforced. They are the newest part of the glorious Italian Empire, and in time they will come to be proud of this. In the meantime, they shall have to be taught to do to show due difference at the point of a bayonet if need be. The global situation has reached a point where there is no time for niceties or respect. For the future of the Empire, even the roughest methods must be accepted. Hopefully we get the French under us with no bloodshed occurring. Yes. Advanced drop tanks. Battleship diplomacy. At least schooling's still getting up. I mean, in the last update it was 8.75. Now that we raise it up, it's now 2.75, which is still not bad. And we get to an academic golden age would be pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. You will be assimilated. Yes, you will. Follow it up with... With what? Oh, goodbye. Hello. Alright, you know what? I kind of like this side. How about we do the Legacy of Trajan? It says something about the treacherous nature of the Reich that the original independent members of the Axis in Europe, only Bulgaria, remains in much the same fashion as Hungary did, and much the same fashion as we did, the Romanians have learned how comfortable the Germans are with abandoning former friends. Still, it would be unfair to lay all the blame for the present condition of Germany alone, for they have themselves to blame as much as anyone else. In plain terms, Romania is having a crisis of identity. It seems to be a common occurrence in these uncertain times. The king, current king, Mahayo I, is a would-be, if somewhat tepid, reformer, doing his best to move the country away from his days in power and the brotherhood of fascism and into democracy, perhaps a well-meaning goal, but foolish all the same. We can keep them from the cliff's edge, but we must work 
quickly. Very quickly. Cool. And can we grab that? New. No. Let's grab this then. Awesome, awesome. We got quite a while for that. The Great Caucasian Revolt. Goodbye, Caucasia. Good, 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 good. Oh, I clicked on something else. Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. And. Good. 40% is not great, but it is going. It is definitely, definitely going. Well, everyone, the man in the Iron Fortress, science fiction author Philip K. Dick, has released his latest novel named The Man in the Iron Fortress, a work of speculative alternative history. The novel takes place in a dystopian world where communism reigns supreme. The point of divergence in the story's history is that the socialist politician Eugene Debs remains with the Democrats, becoming president in 1920 as a result. He supported the nascent Soviet Union and the May 4th movement in China. Debs' beliefs died with him in 1926 and his successor Robert La Follette. Proved to be far more isolationist, a trend that dominated American politics for the next 20 years. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union became dominated by the authoritarian Felix Dzerzhinsky, while the communists under Mao Zedong were able to unite China and counter-invade the Japanese. When the Nazis rose to power, they were able to crush the unsupported allied nations of Europe, but were unprepared for a surprise Soviet invasion and were swiftly defeated in 1947. A joint Sino-Soviet army invaded the Americans, and leading them to divide the country its north and south. The novel set within occupied American follows a wide cast of characters from a Check a spy to a Chinese official obsessed with American cowboy culture. At the center of its plot is a book called The Beast Among the Reeds, which shows of a world where both Nazism and Communism were defeated. The political backdrop is one of rapidly decaying Sino-Soviet relations. Dzerzhinsky has succeeded after his death by even the more totalitarian Levent Ribery, and the threat of nuclear war looms on the horizon. Despite the novel's criticism for seemingly unrealistic developments, the Soviets allegedly drained the Baltic Sea for farmland and built a giant bridge stretching from across the Bering Strait between Russia and Alaska. Mr. Dick has defended his actions being plausible within the best available information he could acquire at the time. That still hasn't stopped the book from becoming a bestseller in the U.S. and Canada and has already been nominated for a Hugo Award. What is regular history too boring for readers now? Cool. Also, we finished up the last book, Assimilation for the French. You will be assimilated and we are still doing the Legacy of Trajan, but there was no event for getting France into our sphere of influence. It's now 1968, but, like, they literally just become a puppet. That's it. There's no, there's no description. Nothing like that. So... Very, very weird, and now my spacebar will not work. Ha! Huh. This is not good. What has happened to the game? Seriously, like, I'm pressing spacebar right now. Because usually you press spacebar to pause the game, but... Oh, boy. Let's go and survey for a project. Let's click on that. And we're turning more, 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 because I want to get some helicopters out, but... It's already 68, man. That's, that's a, we've been playing this for a while already. Wowzers. And I'll do that. The Legacy of Trajan. Trajan. I get this Romania time. And then I want to do the second sex over here, too. I think that'd be good to do. Mm, yeah, dismantle the tax system? I don't think so. Um, with what we've seen, it doesn't seem very good. The burdens of the empire. Oh, wait, I thought I paused it. What the heck? Game. Game. Oh, my goodness. Uh, regardless, I will fix that off screen too, but let's show division first. The Balkans have always been a chaotic mixture of squabbling ethnic groups barely able to keep from turning on each other by strong national governments. Romania may or may not be considered a Balkan state depending on which expert is consulted, but it has the spirit of one regardless. Hungarians, Serbs, Germans, Jews, Ukrainians, and Romani all packed together and each group furious at their lack of independence. Anton Escu and his supporters understood the hard truth that only a powerful hand could keep all these groups in line, but... Mihai? He thinks a democracy could work, never mind how stupid it is to think that once the squabbling masses figure out what they can pull the levers of power so easily, they won't simply tear the state apart for their own interests. We, they, we can play a subtle hand here, inflaming the tensions to the point where Mihai's regime collapses, but preventing a full collapse of the system our chosen successor will inherit. Very good. Oh, boost it up, boost it up. And, of course, we're still doing a great job building roads, building in our allies' territories well. Always doing a great job like that. And what do we have research for next? 15 days will be done with external tanks. And how about we arm some local rebels? While tensions remain high in Romania, the country has yet to break out into a kind of chaos we may need to be in to force the government's hand. The saying goes that beggars cannot be picky, but Romania is not quite yet a beggar. We have means of changing that with war in the Middle East. Uh... Over, we can divert some of the guns produced but never sent over to our militant groups in Romania. I'm sure they'll be grateful for any material support, and the best thing about it is that we need not to be implicated in any of it. The SIM has been instructed to make sure that there's no evidence linking the shipments to our government. That would be pretty darn bad if that were to happen. Our funneling to Romania will harm the government. I love harming other governments. I love it so much. So division. I love it. So yeah, as you can tell, I've not added any more political power to our stuff yet. I want to see what happens naturally and see what's going on. And let's go and read another uh, little focus here. 
asylum for exiles. With each passing day, more and more of those who would oppose the current Romanian regime depart from their homeland for foreign lands. Some have been forced out by the agents of the state and have no choice, but some choose to depart before such a fate could befall them, and still others travel to seek assistance from mercenary groups, rival nations of their own people abroad. If we wish to see the removal of Mahai, with well, a minimal direct action exerted, it is with these very terrorists, ex expatriates, and general scattered dissidents who must we must make common cause with by directing order of Duce Scorza. Scorza? Scorza. Our border control agency has been instructed to expedite the asylum process for any person or persons who can begin or prove origin in Romania, regardless of stated reason for asylum or status within Romania itself, no doubt. We will hear protests over this, but the Romanians know well full that they have no way to enforce their demands, and what's more, they know that we know this. Their complaints will fall on deaf ears. And we shall now fund paramilitary groups. We've already finished up, of course armed local rebels, and asylum for exiles, but in times of chaos and violence, it is only natural for communities to want to feel safe and secure. Well, we live in chaotic times, and there are many communities in Romania, big communities in fact. Communities that border on the sides of small nations of their own, and what do all self-respecting nations need? Why? Militaries, of course, but militaries are quite expensive, unfortunately, and even if they pooled their wealth, it seems doubtful that any of the groups in Romania could fund their own forces. Unless, of course, someone else provided the capital for such a program. Who would be willing to make such an investment, though? Who can possibly gain more from a destabilized Romania than from keeping their coin? We, of course, are just as mystified by this little puzzle as anyone else is, of course. Now, we do have 400 million in terms of debt, but that should be cleared up soon enough. Very, very good. And actually, we're already more than halfway done with this one, so we shall smear the king. Why not? At one time. The monarch of Romania had the worst reputation of any royal since the death of the Romanovs. That man was Carol the second father of the current king. His decadence and general debauchery was the shame of his homeland, contributed greatly to the disillusionment of its people towards the status quo in the years preceding the last war. Why is this relevant? After all, Mihail is not this man, but merely his son, and surely bears no guilt for his father's sins. We, however, no longer live in a world where truth is a final arbiter if anything is to be learned by the successes of the late Dr. Goebbels. By the time a propaganda campaign has ended, the whole of Romania will remember the scandals of Carol II. They will learn that the sun clearly does not fall far from the tree, and they will long for the return of Antonescu, who can deliver them from the failure of a king. And next up, we shall do anything here? Nope. The death of Antonio Oliveria Salazar. Big sadness. One can do you down, and some intelligence to go. Very nice. That and smear the king, discredit the government. The current government of Romania is too soft, far too soft, to stand up to the resurgent Reich. If an eventuality were to come to pass, we might face the prospect of the Hun menace once more, blitzing its way through the Balkans unimpeded. Unimpeded. All because the fools in Bucharest thought themselves virtuous defenders of democracy. They are clearly unwilling to face the truth of the matter. They had far more success in half a dozen years as staunch fascists than they have in the rest of the entire history as a state. We need to remind the people of this if we wish to bring them back into the Brotherhood. It also bears a sense of repeating that a government based on so called democratic values exists wholly due to the scheming and backdoor dealings of a past his prime monarch. They want the people to decide their national fates? Well, give the people the tools to do just that. Which would be pretty good. We're doing better on fuel now, even though we're from our refineries, we've got minus 1300. Wow. Current consumption is minus 112. It's all coming from the army. Maximum. Ooh, the navy does consume quite a bit of fuel. Woo, thirsty boys. Thirsty ships. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. I love smearing their king. And nothing down there. And we have four days left for increased weapon enhancements. And it is, of course, 68 still, so this is a little bit too out of time. Let's grab some skirts. Some light exterior development for APCs. And also, now this, the, the space bar is finally working again for some reason. Not sure why it wasn't working earlier, but hey, whatever. But after we discredit the government, what should we do? We shall force them to comply. Some of our diplomats fear that uh, our lack of a direct border with Romania may make their government less likely to bend to our whims, either because they doubt our ability to provide them security, or they believe Germany will retaliate. Duce Scorza was not impressed by this concern in the slightest. In fact, when all this was conveyed to him, he was seen to smile, although there was no warmth behind it. After jotting a quick note on the pad he always kept on his desk, the Duce turned to the diplomatic team. He told them calmly and without any hint of either humor or anger to remind our Romanian friends that, while our boots may not touch their land so quickly, our planes and missiles can render such a step unnecessary. He asked that this point be stressed during the negotiation and they then waved the diplomats away. Not bad. And let's go and get some more intelligence because we might as well, right? We might as well continue doing our intelligence agency, and I'm not sure what happened to their images, but whatever. Whatever, you know? We'll force them to comply. Ah, oh, the Muscovian autonomy. Oh, the Gibraltar Dam is finally done. Good for them. And England goes to war with Scotland. A lot of things are falling apart. Spend, spend, spend. The Isles bathe in blood once more. And let's go ahead and survey for a project. Very, very good. 
Uh, what's going on down here? Not really too much else. State. Oh, uh, we get influence some more, but that would cost us more political power, even though we're only minus 0.25. Which isn't too bad, but it could definitely be a little bit better. Yeah. Oof. Bye bye, Muscovine. Goodbye. And then Ukraine is probably going to fall next. Four bases in Romania. A key challenge to our request to assert our rightful place as the world's fourth superpower is on our own lack of ability to project our influence and power both diplomatically and militarily. We have not had the continent straddling empire of the Germans nor the ocean embracing dominion of Japan. We do not possess the global, a scattered presence of the OFN, and we have nothing comparable to the U.S.'s economic might. In short, we are trapped largely within the Mediterranean in Europe, and our furthest colonial extent is, or at least was, in the Gulf. Things were somewhat better in the days of the Triumvirate, but with its death, we are back to square one. Establishing suzerainty over Romania will be one with our first big steps into rectifying this long-standing deficiency. The world will come to respect our might, even if we have to leave a trail of bruised and bound nations in our wake to do so. In which they get Italian bases. They get more stability, huh? Wasn't expecting that one, but okay. Not bad. Could be better. Could be worse. And we shall force them to comply and spend more on our GDP. Because there's nothing like spending on GDP as a Moscow economy falls apart. So I didn't realize this, but apparently, these guys are in a faction by themselves, the Siberian Mutual Assistance Pact, so. And Cold Prosperity's looking pretty darn large with Men Jiang over here, under Prince D-Word. Not bad. Oh, they're actually a puppet of China, huh? But they're still in the alliance, regardless. False. Uh-oh. Well, then. Um... Original Malding re-elected? Well, it's a good thing we're not... That might actually spell doom for them, just because I don't know if they can actually get down here. Muscovine's back here, but with Goring? Challenge the U.S. in an... Oh, no, don't, don't, you dare. You're going to cause World War III. I don't want nuclear strikes, please. Well, Italian missiles in the Carpathians. Trust is a crucial part of these sorts of negotiations, but while most think that establishing trust is important mainly for securing a deal, Duce scores as of another mind entirely upon the point. The Romanians will agree to our deals one way or another. They have no real choice when all is said is done. No, what the trust determines is not the success in achieving the deal, but creating an environment where the long-term effects of the deal can be maximized in our favor. We have had our fill of fair weather friends, first the Germans and then our fellow triumvirs. There will not be a third betrayal. So... If we need to establish a few missile launch sites in the mountains to deter any aggression against Romania, then no problem. In reality, this serves us just as much as them, because our investment means nothing if Romania falls. For the love of God, Goring, do not cause World War III. We're just trying to struggle as a small little fourth-rate power here. God, how, we're not making any casts, even though we put, to, did put some military factories on them. It costs so much to produce them. Hey, look at that. Jet interceptors, why not? Thank you. And then we shall grab... It's almost it's still 68, so that's not bad. And light aircraft, heavy aircraft, jet strategic bombers, and we'll do blue water navies, because we should probably develop our naval doctrine, right? Cornwall still exists, huh? Nice. 92 billion? Not bad. So, yeah, that... And also, we have Rex Commissariat in Scandinavian. That's actually really, really cool. I like this a lot. Well, Hans Georg Lem, he doesn't look very cool, but when's the last time we saw Scandinavia? I don't know. Uh, modern Kantai Kessen. Well, we're still fascist, so I kind of might want to go down the way that Japan did well against the American Navy, so let's go down this way. Follow it up with another focus, shall we? I want to fish Romania first, and then we'll do stuff about the second sex, like I said, like I said before. So, leash the government. Once we bring Romania back into the fascist fold, we must ensure that they never again stray from the path. They've had their little experiment in doing so, and look where that has led them. We have no plans at all at this time to micromanage in the minute details of their laws and regulations, but it is in our interest to supervise their transition back order from the brink of utter ruin. Every major department office within the government will be required to have an Italian official who can monitor and direct their progress. Those who seem to us to be committed to improving their state will find it rewarding in terms of rank and office, but if we suspect that any of them are attempting to establish the effort out of some misguided notion of freedom or such foolishness. The consequences will be severe. Indeed. Uh, oh, and some research done as well. Good. One point seven ninety two billion is not bad. They get a whole building base. Hmm. Unequal oil treaty is not bad. Will be forced to give us their oil. Alright, exploit their economy? 
Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. But let's leash the government first. That'll be good. And we have a total of 23 army XP. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Alright, so over here, not looking bad like we said earlier. And over here, could be improved. Uh, let's exploit their economy. In the glory days of the Roman Empire, there were many kingdoms that, for one reason or another, excuse me, were deemed unnecessary to conquer outright. Indeed, or instead, the Romans devised a system of tributaries that would supply them the spoils of conquest with only a fraction of the effort. Well, Duce scores as a well-read man, and in his quest to perfect his beloved fascism, he will take whatever he can find that works. The Roman system worked, and thus we shall see if the classical lessons can be applied to modern times. Romania's economy will act as a subordinate to our own in all things from here on out. Their trade will be tied to our trade, their production to our production, and so on. Let us hope that while we can take from their successes while avoiding their failures. Hopefully we get some money from that, or more factories. That'd be kind of nice. I'll gladly take free factories. Seven days left, huh? And that's how many that's how many days left? Oh, oh, we actually got it done. Wow, look at that. Um actually come aside Slovakai? Slovaki? Money, yes, thank you, thank you. We love money. Um oh one day. Good. Support weapons five. Very nice, very nice. And exploit their economy. Low man. Well, yeah, we got pretty low manpower. That's not good. It's all right though. Pause. Uh, psychological warfare because he can, and then fund the project. Fifty-four percent. So after this, we shall do unequal oil treaties. With Romania, we gain not just another bulwark in Europe to strengthen our position and put our rivals on their heels, but a significant reserve of oil that will look simply wonderful in our collection. In all honesty, we don't really need, require any more oil than we already possess, thanks to our colonies and the resource rights held by the ENI. Still, it never hurts to have backups, even for backups, and having this supply means our foes will not have access to it. But before we can get ahead of ourselves, we will need to make sure that oil is ours and not the Romanian government's. In fact, as well as a name. If we leave it in their hands, we have no guarantee that they won't sell it behind our backs. The treaties we have drawn up to address this issue may not be fair, but neither is life. If they if they want our tanks defending their dirt, they'll have to supply the fuel. Good. Perfect. We finally have 300 some factories. What are we building here? More factories down there. Can we build factories here? I actually was building some military factories as well, just because we could use actually a few more. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you actually our puppet now? They're actually our puppet. All right, so we did it. Great. Here, have some roads. You, you give us your oil, we build your roads. Or we're just casually exploiting your economy. That's all, that's that's how everything works here, right? Nice and peaceful. A nice uh, balancing act. Let's do this one too. Just a rook, that'd be good. And on equal oil treaties. Yes, give me your oil. A little bit of lag, what's going on? I'm oh, probably out of saving. Oh wow, there's some serious lag, but okay, into the fold. The negotiations have ended. After several tense days of deliberation, debate, argument, and two almost brawls between the diplomatic parties, a de deal's been reached that, if not what the Hungarian people may necessarily want, will be for the greater good of the nation. Negotiations have ended, and Italy has emerged victorious. The days when Italy was liable to be dragged this way or that along the chessboard of the major world powers is over. Now, Italy does the playing while once domineering, domineering France quails at the Burgundian horror. Proud England lies emaciated, shattered into a thousand parts by the German hammer, and the once mighty behemoth of the Reich lies scarred from the wounds it brought upon itself. Together, Italy and Hungary will forge a new path irrespective of the wishes of these has-been powers. One towards true peace and brotherhood among the like-minded countries and of, of Europe, sick of the old song and dance. We talk about Hungary here quite a bit compared to Romania. We even talked about Hungary, of course, but Germany, Burgundy, France. Um, okay. Sure, why not? Why not? Nope. Yep. Nope. 92 billion. Man, I wish we could get more growth rate, but whatever. Five days left, not bad, and into the fold. I would love to do Hungary yet, but I oh, actually do get some political power. That's not bad. Yeah. Let's get these guys in, and then let's do some sex stuff. I'm still not doing taxation. Actually, if we remove taxation, we do get like 25% or 25 more political power or something like that. So that wouldn't be bad to do, but we still need some money, man. We still need some money. 
But the second sex, the relationship between fascism and Italian women have always been rife with contradiction and doubts. While numerous prominent early fascists belonged to the female gender in the early fascist movement, asked for more rights for women in their programs, the fascist government's praxis after 1922 told a different story how women suffered systematic discrimination in work, government, and even education. However, this, is, this did not stop Italian women in the fascist camp, especially among the youth, from demanding more rights and equality. They hoped that scores of seizure of power might improve the female condition in Italy. However, many voices within the party, especially in the conservative and traditionalist wings, have expressed worry at these sentiments. We shall see. Maybe it's all for nothing, but maybe there's some merit to all this stuff. Regardless, the budget must expand. It always seems like this is actually going down a little bit. 93.3 billion. If this goes down, we've got to keep an eye on that. Come on, keep building more roads. Infinite roads. And survey for a project. Into the fold with the second sex. And over here, and eh, I got about a month left, that's fine. So, we'll probably do the female face of fascism for more reform points. Uh, yeah, stop whining. <laughs> oh boy. Passive defense is not bad, that female face. It is simply unacceptable that half of Italy's population is mistreated and subjected to the other half's whims. Are the proud mothers, daughters, and wives of Italy not children of our glorious nation, in his wisdom? The Duce has spoken out in favor of improving the condition of women in our nation in every aspect of the public and private life. No more shall the daughters of Italy bow their heads towards their husbands and half-fathers. We shall grant them the freedom and equality they deserve, which we get minus 2% more stability. It is what it is. And 70, well, 70 days left. So these focuses are just a little bit longer, so. Alright, so we have, yeah, state-controlled industry is pretty bad. A true meritocracy is pretty bad. At least we have the ABCs of economics, still, though. And we have eight excellent safety regulations. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. America, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty good trading partner. Fuel is doing pretty darn well as well, so... Not bad, not bad. Are we still training ships? No? Oh, we got a lot more ships here, too. You're basically an entire another task force, so there you go. Go and train. Alright, got a few days left here. Anything for this? Still can't build cast, which really, really sucks. 94.02, man's partner. Women comprise half of the entire population of Italy, yet have always been placed on the sidelines of any administrative action given leeway whenever convenient, like the suffragette movement. Uh, fascism has always put them in the place of housewives, childbearers, homemakers, whatever else to disadvantage them. But Duce scores has seized the issue inherent with this form of thought. For Italy to function as a united nation, its population must share control among themselves, equal opportunity so everyone may bring Italy to her full potential. Unfortunately and inevitably, however, there are those who disagree, those who wish to maintain the patriarchy which Mussolini held up Scores will go along with either, as it is a simple matter of deciding once and for all that what role women will play in society. One option will upset the other, as always. Women can't live with them, can't live without them. Hmm. C'est la vie. And work out gender, so... Hmm. Appeal to tradition. Not bad. Or promote gender equality. Eh, I guess we have to go that way. Because it's on the far left side. The Duce is not a man who likes half measures. And regarding the gender issues in Italy, he does not make exceptions, leaving many conservative figures in the PNF outraged. The Duce has issued a series of orders regarding a plan to end gender segregation and discrimination in the PNF, legal matters, public education, and workplaces. This will be paired with a propaganda campaign to promote a model, of, a new model of a strong, committed, and emancipated fascist woman, willing to serve Italy and the Duce with the same dignity as her male peers. Jet strategic bombers? Why not? So after this one, we'll probably go with... The Milan, a wire-guided Saklos missile. Is that a Saklos? That looks like a, like a play set for artillery. Oopsie, my bad. Uh, I did the wrong one too early. It's fine, whatever. Cool. Let's go and grab some support weapon 6 too. We got seven days left for effective armaments. Uh, that's still that's barely ahead of time. It's almost 69. Nice, but. There's still all the stuff we gotta do, like submarine detection, undersea coordination tactics. Not bad. Not bad. Surface detection, organization. Minus 0.25. Oof, that hurts. 
Not bad. Workout gender. I mean, this gives you the exact same thing. Gender equality. Gender equality. So you might as well go for this one. Uh, let's go. Cool. Okay, cool. Compromise solution. Banned from service military assistance. Back to the kitchen. Or create the SAF. We'll probably create the SAF. To further legitimize women's new role in civilian society, it would be a wise move to introduce them into military life as well. With the help of fascist act activist Piera Gatteschi Fondelli, the Women Auxiliary Service, or SAF, will be created as an armed force in our country, with Fondelli being named General Commander of the new organization. Female volunteers at SAF will assist the other branches of the Italian Armed Forces in their task, and most of all, seeing women march in uniform together with male soldiers will serve as a reminder of the new age that has dawned for women in Italy. The Idol of Desire... Oh, non-combat only. Oh, whatever. There have been new social endeavors to bring women to the forefront of society and national, uh, national administration, but one problem remains. Fascism has always been built around the prominence of a single figure in the middle, and in this situation it is no different. To propagate the further empowerment of women within Italy, there must be a leader of other movement, a female face of fascism, as some have said. Well, the unfortunate truth is that while there is no real person to fill this role... Uh, of course, while there are also, of course, female figures that have spearheaded certain divisions or individual movements, there's not yet one that can be agreed upon to lead the entirety of the feminist, feminist fascism. This problem must be rectified quickly, lest any momentum built up thus far be lost. If not strong man, is it strong woman? It is what it is. In which we will do secular society soon enough. Uh, Integral activities. Ooh, do you get no civilian factory? I like that. No talk and no action. State over church. Alright, well, we'll see what happens. How many more days? we got 16 days left, so let's go ahead and move on to here. And we're approaching 1969, like I said earlier. Not bad. I know, it doesn't seem to be going down. I don't know, my eyes are probably just playing tricks on me. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, I guess we could put down some resistance if we really wanted to, but... Not seeing too much, not gonna lie. Not seeing so, too much resistance around here. 0% is pretty darn nice, I'd say, already. Research? No, we're pretty... Good on pretty much everything, actually. Oh, look at that. Romania. Uh, oh, look at that. Israel line of the Italian Empire. They have a lot of investment in us. Nice. And our fuel is doing... Well, it's doing okay. Could at the SAF. Come on. And... Ooh, 20% more critical population factor. Boom. Good, good, good. And then... The new fascist woman, huh? Women in the workplace, or promoted gender equality, the face of fascism event. So although we met opposition, the Duce and his loyalists and the PNF have managed to set forth a program that will truly innovate women's condition in the country, no longer tied to archaic and oppressive dogmas. The new generation of Italian women is preparing to serve the state and the fascist cause with renewed zeal and enthusiasm. They shall be held up to the same standard as men and expected to contribute to the fascist revolution just like their male peers. Onwards, they shall march to bring Italy ever greater glory and prosperity. Keep promoting that, keep promoting that. 95 billion, if I can get to 100 billion, that'd be great. But happy 69, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. And what's going on in German? Oh, Goring is gone. We should have realized that. I should have realized that earlier. Not you guys, but me. Uh, Goring is gone, and now he's... Well, not going to be here anymore. The loop off is not bad. Uh, who was he, who's trying to fight Bulgaria? That's right. And he, well, couldn't finish. Because... He should have gone to war with Romania or someone else first. Some places the land border with. Ah, second inauguration of LBJ. All the way with LBJ. How is England... Is England losing? They've lost Newcastle. Holy cow. No manpower. Uh, how do the English not have manpower? Are we going to see Scotland reunify the... Uh, we might see them reunify the Isles. Holy cow. I've never seen that happen before. Create the SAF. The new fascist woman. Nothing says fascism like having women in your organization. No more gender wars. The Duce has addressed the demands of women in Italy and has resolved the situation. No doubt this left some in the country displeased, but having this issue solved is the first step on the road to rekindling the flame of the fascist spirit and pushing Italy forward in the march to renew greatness. After this one, we'll probably do the youth pacified and deal with the Vatican in the next episode, so this way we can go back to Rome. Which, hopefully that event gives us more political power, but... Oh, obviously, we'll see what happens. Yeah, having minus 200 political power, not great, but hey, we got some of oh, this done. Cool, you can go and do that. You can probably go ahead and do uh, do that one because you can. 
We're going to need a bit more fuel, I would say. All right, Arabia. Let me suck on your fuel reserves. Uh, it's currently still going down. That's not good. Venezuela. Thank you. Survey for a project. Can we just buy more? How was... Hmm. Not bad. Minus 0.3 every day is not bueno, but whatever. And no more gender wars. We have like... Oh, military already. God dang it. Urgh. Cut that thing. And we're out of fuel again. Of course. But let's click on this focus and we'll end the episode here. Uh, let's see. No more gender wars. And oh, let's read one more. Let's read, read more. Oh, no. No debt. No debt. I don't know what you mean by debt. No, 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 no. A secular society. The modern society is not a religious one. In fact, a country should strive to make sure religion is not too powerful in modern society. To this end, we should move against the church and own schools and begin propaganda campaigns to enlighten the Italian people. About the superiority of a secular society, these efforts with luck will harm the influence of the Catholic Church in Italy greatly. But regardless, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall watch the world burn and develop Italy to greater heights. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.